A kimono is not the hardest sewing project, but also not the easiest. But I still think it's pretty fun for sewing beginners. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. I have said this in many videos before that being a kimono teacher and stylist and being a kimono tailor or sewing teacher are two totally different things. It's two totally different certificates. By the way, being a kimono tailor is a national exam, not for kimono teachers, by the way. So we kimono teachers know the theory, how to make a kimono, but most of them or most of us can do it practically. And luckily I love sewing and I started to learn how to sew a kimono five years ago. Yes, it's already five years and I'm still super bad at it, but it's so much fun. I'm not planning to take certificates in that or anything. So I actually don't want to consult anyone about sewing kimono, but I think it's fun to have you with me on my sewing journey. On Instagram and Twitter, a lot of you are actually messaging me about why wouldn't I make a video about how to make a kimono and I thought yeah it would probably fun to make a video about a very simplified way to make a kimono because I found this in a catalog for carnival costumes because I'm from Germany and we celebrate carnival not Halloween but I think we all know that even Halloween costumes tend to be not really authentic. And the worst thing about this is that this was actually a sewing pattern of a kimono for a geisha. I am not going into detail. Obviously, this thing is harder to sew than a usual kimono would be. So when you're looking for a pattern for a kimono that is easy to make, then this is the video for you. Although I was actually thinking about making a real kimono pattern and then try to earn money with that. But honestly, the biggest difference between wasai making kimono and yosai making everything that is not kimono related is that wasai doesn't use any patterns. There is no existent kimono pattern because you don't need it. Because a kimono consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rectangles. And you don't need a pattern to cut eight rectangles because you can just cut a rectangle. <laughs> so easy, just draw your measurements on the fabric and cut. A professional kimono tailor doesn't use any patterns. They have some kind of forms or patterns to draw lines onto the fabric. For example, the round curve of the sleeve that is called tamodo. That is actually something that exists in a pattern. But usually they calculate everything down for each customer and then cut the fabric into pieces and sew it together so it ends up with exactly that measurement. But this video is supposed to be fun, so I'm not gonna bore you with any numbers and unnecessary measurements you don't really need when you just want to make an easy kimono, not the really perfect one, but still easy and still authentic. And I'm going to show you what measurements you need and how you get them. This is how a real kimono looks like, but I think most of you know that. First you need the length of the kimono, which is the same as your height. And you need twice your height, because the front and back panels are made of one piece that is then folded over. Then you need the horizontal length of the sleeve, that is called yuki. The yuki is the length from the middle of your neck to your wrist. When measuring this, make sure that your arm is in a 45 degree angle to your body. Probably will need help when measuring this. Then you need a measurement that is called B. Let's call the hip bones width 
alpha. For measuring alpha, start and end measuring behind your hip bones on left and right. And some subtract 15 centimeter from that and you have B. When you have B, you need A. A is basically your hip measurement minus alpha and divide it in two. And now that you have your measurements, you already know that you need a huge piece of fabric. I think I purchased four and a half meter for this video. So when you want to try this just for the first time or you really just want to have a cute Halloween costume, then I actually would recommend to get old bed sheets in a thrift store. Actually, that is what I had planned for this video, but unfortunately in Japan, thrift stores are apparently not um, selling any used bed sheets. However, I can't emphasize enough that this video is just a simplified way to make a kimono. The outcome will be an authentic kimono, but it is not the very traditional hand-sewn way to make a kimono. But it gives you a good overview of the construction of a kimono and I think it is the first and the last time I will do it that detailed. So I think it's still fun to watch when you have no clue how a kimono is actually made. The basic construction of your kimono are two front panels and two back panels. We make them this time of one piece of fabric that will be folded in half to half the front and back. And we first cut open the middle of the front. The width of the fabric is your yuki plus four times of your sewing allowance. The length is twice of your height plus sewing allowance. I start with measuring out my height plus sewing allowance. I mark this out and fold it over at this point. When the two panels are nicely aligned, I pin them together at the four corners so they won't shift. And turn the fabric. Then I mark out the width of the first panel we need. Draw a line and cut along the line. as well as along the bottom of the top layer. I mark out the fold on the top with thread. And iron this fold as it will be the top edge of the kimono. This edge or fold is called katayama. Then I open up the panel and fold the width in half. Make sure to align it nicely. Then you measure 3 cm from the katayama into the back panel. This is the point until we cut the front panel open. Cut along the fold. Sew 
So this is what we have done so far. We cut out the first panel. We pressed in the katayama in the middle of the panel and we cut open the front. 3 cm into the back panel. The next step can be skipped. But I have decided to insert also this one seam on back and front that is called uchiage. The uchiage is marked out on back and front panel 38 cm from the katayama. And you draw a second line at least 2 cm from the first line. Those are then stitched together. I start out with the back panel. I measure 38 cm from the katayama and draw a line. And then one line on the red. This will shorten the kimono. So when you plan to do this step, include this length into the calculations of your first panel. For your info, you'll need twice of your height plus sewing allowance plus at least two centimeter ujiage. When I'm done on the back, I also mark out the lines on the two front panels. Fold up the center of the two lines and pin them together. Sorry for my out frame filming, by the way. But you get the idea, I hope. Stitch them together. Pressing seams is a little different in wasai and yosai. I think it is a small detail that makes look a kimono even more authentic. Usually I think what most people do is you press your seams open so they lay nicely flat and you can work on with that. In wasai it's different. You actually fold one side over so it covers up the seam and then you fold it back and you have here just a few centimeter millimeters sorry it's just a few millimeters overlay when you have kimonos at home actually you can try to touch it there is this little overlay just a few millimeters that will cover the seam and i think it gives it more of a three-dimensional look than just pressing all the seams flat with the uchiage, I like to put my thumb under the fold. My fingertip is a few millimeter over the seam, where I fold the fabric down and press it into place. This is what we've done so far. The uchiage is stitched down on front and back. Now we're going to insert a center back seam, so it looks like we have two panels on the back which we haven't. I fold the width of the fabric in half and align the two layers nicely. Then I pin down the fold starting at the point where we've cut the front and back panel open. Pin it together all the way down to the bottom. And sew this in place.
Cut then the two panels open where the center back seam ends. This cut should be 9.5 cm deep. Put the fabric like so on the floor and mark out your measurement A from the center back seam. Mark it also under the uchiage. Turn the fabric and add the same markings on the other side. And finally, you can press the center back seam. Fold 2 or 3 mm over the seam and press it down. Fold the kimono at the katayama over and align the panels nicely. Pin them together at the marking of measurement A on the back. Stitch it in place. Make sure not to stitch the uchiage into this. Press the seam open. Fold the sewing allowance under it and pin it. Stitch over the edge by hand or machine to finish the seam of both sides. I did it by hand by the way, which took me about 45 minutes. So we have stitched down the back and front panels with measurement A, which gives us the seam under the shoulders, the so-called wakisen. Now mark out the measurement B from this seam, the wakisen, on both sides on the front panels. Cut out another two panels with 15 cm width and the length is 15 cm smaller than your height. Don't forget to add sewing allowance. These two panels are called okumi. We will now stitch the okumi on both sides onto the marking of measurement B. This will give you exactly this part of the kimono. I marked out measurement B on the wrong side of the kimono. Fold the kimono over. I hope this is focusing. Um, yesterday when I cut the okumi, I found out that this white stripe, where usually um, the fabric is not um, printed. This one is some kind of, but still you have still the holes in there. So on the back you can see this white stripe pretty nicely. Um, this is exactly 1.5 centimeter what I'm using for my sewing allowance. So I decided not to mark this out and to pin this along this white stripe, this edge of the stripe. I'm so sorry for my finger, it's so weird. <laughs> I want to use a different finger <laughs> along this white stripe onto the kimono. If you don't have that, you would actually, I would recommend you to also mark out your sewing allowance on the okumi, um, which I don't have to do now. So yay for those printers. Pin the okumi right side on right side onto the kimono.
press the seam. In case the short sewing allowance into the white one and pin it down. So you can stitch over it and finish the seam. So when you have finished off all the seams, this is my Okomi seam. I have nicely encased this. Make sure to press this after sewing it because I usually keep this a little wobbly to finish the seam off a little easier and then iron it later. And you do the same with the side seams and the so-called wakisen, that one that goes under your shoulder straight to the hem. And you might remember that we have kept this open here. I've just sewn to the uchi age until here because this will be the miyatsuguchi, the opening under your shoulder, um, which you will need for putting the kimono on. And on the top, this is where the sleeves will be attached. Um, I have a very long yuki, but I'm quite slim, so I have a very short mayahaba. And we have sewed this, so we have a huge sewing allowance here because I have a very short mayahaba, but I need all of the fabric in just a very small sewing allowance here because I need the size of the yuki, which means this part here has to go diagonally upwards. So when you fold the top edge for the sewing allowance we will need, in my case this is 1.5 centimeter, and you hold it like this, you can already see that this kind of folds it itself into the measurements you need. I'm pretty sure this will be not the super correct measurements, but doing it this way is so much easier. And then I did exactly what I've just explained. I marked out the sewing allowance on the top, press it down, created a rolled hem by folding the edge inside and let the fabric do what it wanted to. I press this down and repeat this also on the other side of the kimono. Mark out 23 cm from the top. This will be where the sleeves will be attached. Speaking of which, for the sleeves I cut out two rectangles, which is half of the yuki plus twice of my sewing allowance, and the length is 1 meter and 4 centimeter plus twice of sewing allowance. I have already folded my rectangles in half here and I pinned the bottom together. Mark out your sewing allowance from one corner and draw the tamoto onto it. I have put this pattern for the tamoto in different sizes onto my Patreon page for download. It's a public post so everyone can download it. Mark out 23cm from the top. Leave this open when sewing later. Plus, the other side will be left open completely as well.
To finish the seam, cut down the sewing allowance with peaking shears. Mark down the sewing allowance on the side you have kept open. Press the sewing allowance. And on the side that is still open, press down the sewing allowance you have marked out. Fold then half under to create a rolled hem. I sewed down my sewing allowance by hand. and also the rolled hem on the other side. Good morning, we are entering day three. I have just filmed my A roll, yay. Last night, I have some footage I will put in right now, I think. I have um, hemmed the bottom hem as well as the side edges of the okumi and I just did a normal rolled hem and stitched it over um, by machine because I remember that I actually wanted to stitch everything by machine. This whole kimono was supposed to be stitched by machine just to make it easy and fast. Minus 50 points for Ravenclaw I would say for being so authentic and just always over complicating things. Um, today I am going to make my very favorite part which is attaching the sleeves. I love attaching the sleeve for every kimono, it's just so much fun. It's more fun to hand stitch it, it's a little troubling when um, sewing it on the machine but I'm doing it by machine and hopefully well. Mark out 23 cm from the top of the open side of the sleeve. Also on the layer below. Align the top line of the kimono and sleeve. Hold those together and turn the kimono inside out. Let me show you this from a different angle on the other sleeve. Align the tops, grab the two from the inside of the kimono and turn the kimono inside out. Hold 
Hold the 23cm markings on all four layers and pull the top in place so all layers align neatly. Pin the bottom layers and the two top layers together at the marking. And continue to pin those layers together. Wrap this opening around your sewing machine and sew it in place. Start at the first marking and sew to the other side. When you're done, make a few horizontal stitches back and forth where your start was. And do the same on the other side. Press the seams after attaching both sleeves. So now that your sleeves are attached, we only have to tackle the trickiest part, the collar. For the collar, cut out a 2 meter long and about 17 cm wide rectangle. And you need another rectangle that is 90 cm long and 17 cm wide. You don't need to add any sewing allowance to these rectangles. Then we have to sew the shorter collar onto the long collar. Mark out the center of the longer collar. And also on the shorter collar. Align these two and pin them together. Mark where the shorter collar ends on the longer collar. Turn the shorter collar over and align it at this marking. Pin it onto the long collar and sew it on with 1 cm sewing allowance. Fold the shorter collar over again. And mark out where it ends on the other side. Fold the short collar over again. Align the end onto the marking. Pin and sew it in place. When you're done sewing, fold over the collar again. The collar is prepared so far. Now we have to mark out where it will go onto the kimono. First, mark out the point where the collar will meet the seam of the okumi. This point is called kensaki. It is 23 cm from the katayama on the okumi seam. And then you have to mark out the diagonal line the collar will go down the okumi to its end. Draw this line onto the back of the kimono. Make sure that they have the same length on both sides. Back to the collar. Mark out a 1 cm sewing allowance from one edge of the collar.
After marking out the center of the collar and 10 cm left and right of it, draw a round curve between those into the collar. This will be the back collar and it's one of the three places of a kimono that are not sewn straight. Measure 11 cm from the center of the collar to the other side. And the same at the ends of the curve. And do also draw the curve onto the other side. About 25 cm from the end of the curve, make a 13 cm mark on the other side and connect your markings with a line. On the end of the collar, make a 15 cm marking and connect the markings with a line. Start pinning the collar onto the kimono with the 1 cm sewing allowance we have marked out first. Pinning the collar onto the kimono is actually the hardest thing and actually sewing it on again is just awful because two pieces of fabric usually don't um, work very well together when you try to put them into the way they don't want to. It's like a cat, I always would say. So I thought I would just um, comment while actually doing it um, because filming it without talking is super hard and you will see me also going a lot of back and forth when actually doing this. So what I have done so far is I had the middle of the collar um, pinned onto the center back seam like so and then um, I have pulled this first left and then the other side and um, try to ease this out with pinning it on and I was always trying to not have a crease here on the back because when you do it like this with the sewing machine it is absolutely awful okay this should be fine okay and then I fold this over you can also see I have cut this lower part <laughs> because it was a little too much fabric below that and I fold this over and try to I use this as an ankle point to pull and then I try to find the Kensaki it should be around here somewhere Perfect. And you can see I have tried not to have any ease in the fabric. Those wrinkles here, they will kill me on the sewing machine, I will tell you. This will be super hard to sew, but I think we're gonna give it a try. And now it's easy because from this point to here we have actually marked our line out which is pretty cool so basically I'm just pinning the collar onto the line we have drawn onto the back of the kimono earlier
and then I repeated the same steps on the other side. Then I sew the collar along my sewing allowance marking onto the kimono. And it worked out totally fine with the first try which was very satisfying. Sometimes I have to unpick this and redo it two to three times. Press the seam. Press then the other side while folding it along the marking we have drawn onto it. Insert another piece of fabric into the center of the collar. Hold it in place by stitching it onto the seam allowance inside of the collar. Trim down the accent fabric of your okumi because this will make your collar super bulky if you don't. Fold then the collar over and make sure that the edge you have pressed in earlier covers your machine stitching for about 2mm. Fold also the ends in. When you've pinned it onto the kimono, you can stitch over this by machine or hand stitch it on. I again did it by hand because it looks better. And she is finally complete. Of course, this way to make a kimono is only for women. I will do one for men too, one day, 
so stay tuned. So I still hope you found all the information or at least a piece of information you were looking for when it comes to making a kimono. When you're not subscribed to my channel yet and you want to see more kimono content, feel free to subscribe. I would be very happy when you stick around a little more on this channel. And thank you so much for watching and I talk to you in my next video. Bye!